Welcome to the Mount Zion First African Baptist Church of Charlottesville, Virginia. On behalf of Pastor Dr. Alvin Edwards and First Lady Minister Barbara Edwards, we welcome you to this worship experience. It is our joy to bring you these worship services. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thursday evening prayer service is held every Thursday at 7 p.m. Please join the conference by calling 701-801-6067. Please come out on Tuesday, August the 11th, for our COVID-19 testing here at Mount Zion in the church parking lot from 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. Today, Pastor Edwards will be continuing with his series, Meeting with the Master, Part 4, from John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. We pray this message will strengthen and encourage you. Stay tuned next week for part five of Meeting with the Master. Oh, he touched me and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Oh, something happened, and now I know He touched me and more time he touched me he touched me and all the joy that floods my soul oh something happened and now I know He touched me and made me whole. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for another day. Thank you for another moment of preaching. Pray, O oh Lord, that you hide me behind thine cross, allow them to see more of thee. Have mercy, O oh Lord, on us, because we none of us could stand your justice. Thank you for this day. Thank you for touching us. Thank you for touching Brother Jonathan, and thank you for touching a number of other people, Lord, who've been sick in a way. Now touch this word, that it might touch somebody's heart. In Jesus' name, we do pray and for his sake. Let us all say, amen. We thank each and every one of you for worshiping with us on this day. And again, I'm honored to be the pastor here for now some 39 years. And we bless the Lord for those 39. And so I'm back in the book that brought me here, in the book that's going to keep me. And it's in the fourth chapter of John that I still am focused on the Samaritan woman. And I call this a meeting with the master. And this is part four. And beginning at verse 10, actually let's go back to verse 7. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest, the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest 
have asked him and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And the well is deep, from whence then hast thou that thy living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? And I call this a meeting with the master. On the last Lord's Day, I shared with you the reason this Samaritan woman came to the well at high noon. It is because of her reputation. I also emphasize the difference between reputation and character. Because your reputation may or may not be true. But character is what you are. You can tell the character of a tree by the fruit it bears. And so this Samaritan woman had a reputation. And the truth of the matter is, all of us have a reputation. And so Jesus meets the Samaritan woman at the well, and he discusses with her about her relationships. He talked with her about her relationship with the Jewish race. He talked with her about her relationship with her community. And most important, he talked about her relationship with the Lord himself. And so this morning, I want to continue eavesdropping on this meeting and the conversation between the master and this Samaritan woman to see what else we can glean from their conversation. You would notice Jesus gets her attention by asking this question. If you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink and I would give you fresh living water. And it is this question that engages her and whets her appetite for who he is and for all that he is saying to her. So now Jesus pushes the envelope somewhat and he continues to peel the layers of the onion off and he takes her in deeper into conversation with that question. Now, Jesus, you have to understand that Jesus never asked questions to gain information. Rather, he asked questions to get the person to think, to examine their lives, to assess their situation, or to weigh their options about their life. And when you read John's gospel, you will learn and discover that life to John represents the idea that life implies consciousness, for there is no knowledge without conscious existence. In other words, you know that you are alive and you have the ability to think and to reason. And what I want to suggest to you is this, that a person cannot understand those things without direct or indirect contact. In other words, you will have to come to that point. And so the life giver teaches this Samaritan woman and he teaches us too that life involves learning and development and going the distance because knowledge is growing and not static. Many of you who are listening to me, listening to me, listening to me today, you know that knowledge is not static. For every day there's something new Technology is just taking us to places and doing things we never dreamed of. And so in other words, his question gets all up in girlfriend's Kool-Aid. He, he, he gets into her business, if you will. And my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, his reason for talking with this woman is to get her to think. I mean, to think about her relationship with herself, to think about her relationship with her community, and especially her relationship with the Lord. And whenever anyone is standing up to preach, their objective ought to be and is to help the hearers and the unbelievers to see Jesus. That's why every Lord's Day you ought to breathe, a, breathe this prayer. Lord, help the preacher and help us to speak to souls 
that they may see Jesus Christ as our Savior and accept him as their own. And so Jesus is getting very close, up close to her, personal with this Samaritan woman. But what got her attention and what kept her attention was how Jesus reacted to her saying that Jews had nothing to do with Samaritans. And Jesus took no offense. And what she said, instead he appealed to her curiosity. And he responded this way. Jesus answered, said, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink and I would give you fresh living water. Listen, the mere hint that he knew something that she did not know was sufficient to get her attention and change her attitude so much so that the conversation went from idle chit chat to serious inquiry. Listen, her reply was, was somewhat curious for she said, sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw with. And this well is deep. So how are you going to get this living water? Are you, better, are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob who dug this well and drank from this well? He and his sons and livestock and they passed it on down to us? Well, based upon these words, the Samaritan woman's understanding was limited. And furthermore, I believe she is ready for serious conversation. You see, my brothers and sisters, whenever there is a conversation that gets personal, there is a tendency for us to draw back. See, when somebody gets all in our Kool-Aid and they want to talk about stuff that we really don't want to talk about, we have a way of becoming defensive. When it has to do with our behavior, when it has to do with our attitude, when it has to do with our stuff, with our disposition, we get defensive and many times we try to change the subject. But notice, the Samaritan woman's first attempt was to dodge the conversation and she tried to dodge it by changing the topic to race. Then, she tried to change the conversation again to the fact that Jesus didn't have anything to draw with. Then the King James says, are you greater than our father Jacob? Are you better, a better man than our ancestor Jacob who dug this well? She continued to try to change the subject. So this time she goes to her ancestors. But you know, like many of us, when we don't want to confront the demons in our own lives, we will try to change the subject. When we don't want to deal with our own stuff, we have a way of trying to change the subject, start an argument, or become very defensive. But when someone confronts us, we do some of everything to avoid talking about what's wrong with us. Now understand me, Jesus was not offering the Samaritan woman just any kind of water. He was offering her living water. I mean water that springs up from your soul on the inside of who you are. Water that is a word to live by. Let me see if I can help us to see this. There was a place back in Joliet, Illinois called the Flowing Well. And it was in a place called Pilcher Park. And many people from all over the city would take plastic drugs and, and big bottles and they would go out there and fill them up and bring them back to the house. And that was true about us. We did the same. And we, yes, we had running water, but this water at the flowing well, it was springing up from the ground and this water was better. It tasted better. It was cooler. It was water that had welled up from the earth. 
Now the little water that we drank from tap water, it seemed flat. It was dead, if you will. It, it couldn't quench your thirst like the well water did. And that's the difference with the water that Jesus was offering. The water she was going to drink, the Samaritan woman came to get, it was water that quenched their thirst. It was water that wasn't flat. It was water that had been there since the time of Jacob's son, Joseph, but, but it was not living water. That water didn't give life. That water may have helped to sustain life. It may have quenched their thirst, but that water was not living water. It didn't spring up out of the ground. It was just in a well. And all Jesus was saying in so many words to the Samaritan woman that you've come here to draw this water out of the well. And it's just really mere rainwater that runs into Jacob's well. But if you had to ask of me, Jesus said, if you had asked me, I would have given you water far better than the water that's in Jacob's well. Because when you drink from my water, you will never thirst again. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I, I know water has life qualities in it. But this water would be life to you. This water will be inside of you. This water is a well of water springing up into everlasting life. See if I can help you see this. Listen. What Jesus is saying is this. I understand, Miss Woman, that, that your body is made up of 70% water. I understand that, that, that you need water. I understand that you can become dehydrated but, and you need water to quench your thirst. But the water that I'm offering you is a water of word of God to order your steps by. It's a word that'll be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. It's a word that will guide you. It's a word that will keep you. It was a word that will help you. It's a word that will rescue you when you're in trouble. This water will keep you from everlasting to everlasting. This water won't be like ordinary water when you drink it. Because once you drink it, it's done. But this water that Jesus offers all of us, you don't need a rope to lower your bucket. You don't need a container to get this water. Your soul that is in you will remain intact, but water will spring up when you let Jesus come into your life. And so the conversation continues. And Jesus was saying to the Samaritan woman, I am giving this everlasting water just for your asking. In other words, girlfriend, it's free. There's nothing you can do to merit it. You can't demand it. You can do all the good you want to on earth and you cannot require it. There's no ritual. There's no ceremony you got to do to get this water. All Jesus was saying is this. If you knew the generosity of God, if you knew the grace of God, if you knew who I am, you would be asking me for a drink. And I would give you fresh living water. Oh, my brothers and sisters, ain't that good news? That the Lord is willing to give us living water just for the asking? I mean, you don't get this because of your goodness. You don't get it because of your so-called righteousness. You don't get this because of your deeds, but you get it because of his grace and his mercy. And he says, ask. That's all he's saying. In a nutshell, Jesus is saying to the Samaritan woman, if you want this water, just ask me. And I'll give you fresh living water that will spring up out of your soul. But the good news is not the first time the Lord said ask. He said ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock 
and the door shall be open. The Bible tells us on many occasions, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Let me see. Jesus saying to any and all of us who know him, if any person lacks pardon, let that person ask me and I will pardon them. If any person lacks anything that is essential to his or her life, to their happiness, to their present life, or to their future life, tell them they can ask me because on the inside is a well. And if you just talk to me, if you just ask me, it's yours for the asking. Listen, God gave to this world, and the Bible says it like this, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And so at this meeting with the master and the Samaritan woman, we learn that this living water is ours just for the asking. And since it comes from within, since it springs up in our soul, it will never cease to flow. Doesn't matter whether it's in the wintertime, doesn't matter how cold it is, everything else can be frozen, but this water in your life is from everlasting to everlasting. But then one more thing. It's clear that Jesus needs nothing from us. But to be available to him. Listen, if he had drawn the living water out of the well at Sychar, he would have had to borrow the woman's water pot. He would have had to say, let me borrow your rope. He would have said, let me borrow your cup. Otherwise, he said, I cannot get at the water in the well. But listen, but because he is the living water and because it comes from him, he doesn't need anybody's water pot or rope. That's why Jesus said, I am that I am. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine before Abraham was, I am. In other words, the Lord could be whatever we need him to be. He didn't need a rope. He didn't need a bucket. Because there was a well on the inside that just for the asking, he would release a spring that will be from everlasting to everlasting. And so from this meeting, the Samaritan woman learned that Jesus could be whatever we need him to be in our lives. Listen. I know some of us will persist in bringing our own water pots and our own ropes to help the Lord. In other words, you may want to do this or that for him, but, but I need to tell you this. If you are going to be an instrument for the Lord, if you want him to use you, if you're going to be a witness for him, you cannot say, I know that he is the Savior, and then I say, I must. And then someone else may say, I must do this. And another may say, I must do it. No. Can I tell you that the only must about us is this? That you must, we must be willing to empty our lives, to empty ourselves of what we want to do, of who, to whom we want to speak. Or to who we want to pray with and do what Christ wants us to do. In other words, we must be the emptiness and he must be the fullness. We must be the poverty and we must let him be the riches because he owns the whole wide world. We must be the poor, miserable beggar and he must be the supplier. He must be your all and all. And all that happens is that when you meet the master for yourself, you will learn some things about who you are, but you'll also learn about what you can become. Because he is able 
to enable you to be the very best you can be. And that's what happens when you meet the master. Let's pray. God, our Father, thank you for this word. I pray that you hide it in our hearts so that we might not sin against you. Thank you for all that we do. Now bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. I recognize there may be some watching us today. And maybe you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want you to know that you can become a Christian today. And it's easy just by you inviting the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Because when he comes into your heart, he'll make you a new person. He'll make a difference in who you are and what you are. He'll make a difference in your dreams, your aspirations, and your determination. And so this morning, if you want to become a Christian, pray this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus, I recognize that I am a sinner. I realize that I need you in my life, the one who is the life giver. I realize you made me in your image and after your likeness. Now, Lord, help me to be like you, to accept you as my personal Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I would invite you to call 434-293-3212. Again, 434-293-3212. And leave your name and number and someone will get in touch with you. Because now that you've accepted the Lord as your Savior, I would want you to know that the difference in your life now will be that the Lord will be with you. But we need to help you to get started. And to get to first base. Thank you for listening. And give us a call. I also want to announce and remind the members of Mount Zion. This is the month that we usually take our benevolent offering. And we give it to back to school bash where we buy school supplies for children. And so I would ask that each of you would add a couple of dollars. Those of you who can so that we might bless some children who were in need. I can tell you that the middle school and high school supplies have already been, our, our numbers have soared so that we already ran out and had to cap it off. And I would probably hazard to guess today that even the 850 that we've ordered for elementary, that they've almost gone by now. But you can register. Go to the Charlottesville City Schools website. You can go to City of Promise website. You can go to Alma County's website. And you should be able to register. Thank you for listening, Mount Zion. And now look to the Lord. Now may the grace of God, our Heavenly Father, may the love of His Son, Jesus the Christ, may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen. God bless you. Have a good day.